I've been blessed to have been participating in probably 43 tournaments that teams I've coached have won over the years. But the Air Canada Cup was special for two reasons. One, there had never been a person of color, black man, to coach a, an elite team, at, um, whether it be Major AAA or Bantam, any AAA team or anything at that time before me, and that, that had won. Two, it was because the players were the youngest team in the tournament. We started out with the development camps and I had scouts that would help me like Denny LeBlanc who ended up in Boston, uh, Washington, etc. Uh, I had a lot of people that were helping me but what we did, I had a chart on my wall and what I, I prepared a structure, a game plan and with that structure I wanted to have things that other teams weren't doing. Not what they were doing, I wanted to know what they were not doing, the other coaches and teams. So what I did at the beginning as I went to Andre LeBaron, who eventually ended up being the goaltending coach for the Minnesota Wild, brought him on board as our full-time goaltending coach. I also brought in, at that time, a figure skating coach for edges. I wanted to make sure that the players could understand their edges. Then we addressed another step where I wanted to have more balance and agility, so I brought in a ballet jazz teacher. Uh, at that time, so we had ballet jazz. And the other part where we innovated on, which was completely different, my players, if you didn't communicate, they knew they weren't gonna play the next shift. They had to communicate. We, we only lost eight, eight or nine games that whole season. We uh, won the league, uh, we won the uh, series, we went to Air Canada and never lost a game. We won every game and not in overtime. Our games were won in regulation time. We had to win because <laughs> I had already told Sherry Basson on national TV we were going to win the tournament. And I had already verified on video the tapes of the games of all of the teams that were there. I was up all night watching, so I knew, and then I said, they can't beat us. So we had a game plan, a structure. We were going to shut them down, and we know who to shut down. Our power play was potent, and we had Reggie Savage, too. That could, he had scored 86 goals that year. Then uh, our PK was like, I would say, okay, let's play keep away. Okay, boy, we're playing keep away and that would be it. And what was comical at that, uh, during that tournament, they took team photos. And during the team photo, of course, I'm the vice president, uh, I'm running the team. The person taking the uh, pictures, the photograph, I'm short, five foot five, black, I mean, really five, four and a half, but I like to say five, five. <laughs> but he said, uh, well, where's your coach? And one of the players said, well, this is Coach Barris. <laughs> oh, and he looked back again a second time. So when he took the picture, he told me, he said, well, you'll go to the back. So one of the players said, no, no, he's in charge. And my assistant that was with me and all, they were a little upset. So I told them, I said, no, no, leave that alone. That battle's not worth fighting. That's motivation for us. That just, the, he'll know who I am before this tournament's over, so don't worry about it. Uh, well, the players were the, Grenoy, Sal Grenoy, Dirty Frog, uh, Sal Nag, uh, the Dirty N. Uh, it was strange because I never really had a player on opposing teams do that. So I'd never heard that openly come by the bench and say it. I heard it there. But I knew why. I told the players, I said, guys, I said, they're doing it. They're trying to distract you. They, they do not understand that it's not really bothering us, even though it's ignorant. They're actually motivating us. Now, if I had to react it and started yelling and screaming because of that, we wouldn't win the tournament. We were there. We had an objective was to win the tournament. And that, that more or less would embarrass, uh, you call us all the names you want. We're, we're walking around like this, we're number one. So I said, what do you want to do? Do you want to pay attention to the racial slurs? And uh, We know you're French. <laughs> uh, you know I'm black. I said, all you have to do is look at me. So do not let it bother you. Use it as motivation, stay calm, play the game. And at the end of the game, we're the winners. We were playing uh, Calgary Buffaloes. Uh, we were having a little bit of a lapse there. And uh, one of the players yelled out, remember where the coach was in the photo? 
we're getting them in the front. <laughs> the hundreds of players yelled that, so we, uh, we beat them, and from there it was history. And I also knew the importance of it. I knew by winning it would draw attention to others to want to coach. Because I had started coaching in 1969. I never had the opportunity to have a peer that was of my own skin pigmentation or skin tone uh, before me that I could use as a gauge. Someone that I could maybe exchange with. To, to know. Now when I was coaching in a GM, Herbie Karnick, I had, I had watched him play, but I had never met him personally at the time, called me. Art Dorrington called me. These were pioneers. Stan Maxwell. They called me, but they were players. But as I found out as I went on, that the majority of people in hockey are good people. The majority of people in hockey are good people. And it's probably sports is one of the areas where integration is much more easier than all the other spheres of life. So whether it be the workforce, uh, employment in an office, et cetera, and so forth. If you're in sports, and it's a little easier to, to integrate with them once uh, the players accept you better because diversity and, and inclusion, it has no effectiveness unless there's acceptance. I can go to the dance, be allowed to come in and be around you, but if nobody's dancing with me, well, you know, I stood in the doorway because I was so happy for the kids because I knew they had to, uh, they had to make adjustments. These are kids and I'm treating them like pros, but they're accepting it. They actually bought into it. Like I said, I'm 5'5", five, five, I'm black. There were no black coaches at that level and they're listening to everything I'm saying and uh, they carried me on their shoulders and when we won in Quebec, uh, they were, we were like a family. So for me, I just couldn't help but just stand there and look. I was so happy for them. Hopefully today, those players are treating people as human beings, respectful those, and uh, in the right way. But when we won and I was able to look at that, it was special. Oh, someone's gonna get the Gatorade treatment. I don't know.